Okay, so here's one that not everybody is ever going to have to deal with this, but this is circuit integrity cable or CI cable. Uh, now this would be a cable for critical signaling, remote control, or power limited circuits that remains intact and provides operation during a fire for a specific length of time under test conditions. All right, so this is a limited energy circuit. As you can see, it's for signaling, remote control, or power limited. And it's there to ensure its own survivability during a fire. Uh, you're not going to wire your doorbell with this, right? Obviously, you know, if your house is on fire and you lose the doorbell, well, that, that's probably not that big of a deal. Uh, if your building is on fire and you lose the fire pump control system, that's a problem. So there are some areas where you might find circuit integrity cable. You're going to find this in critical operation systems, Article 708. Uh, that would be like a, a 911 call center. Uh, read 708.1 and, and you'll see kind of some examples of that. Um, you might also find this for fire pumps, like I said, and for emergency systems in Article 700. So that would be a circuit integrity cable. It's easy to confuse that with an electrical circuit protective system. Okay, so this is a system of materials for protecting wiring systems and maintaining their integrity during fire exposure. All right, so type MI cable, mineral insulated cable, uh, has a, a certain amount of fire resistance built into it just because of, of what that product is. Now, does that mean that it's an electrical circuit protective system? Not necessarily. That could be a component of, a, of an electrical circuit protective system. So with an electrical circuit protective system, uh, that's something that is tested and listed. So you might have your uh, MI cable, maybe you're the manufacturer of it, or, or here in the photograph, this is uh, an MC cable. I believe this is Vitalink is what it's called. And that's a uh, fire resistive cable system. I might uh, protect that in a certain way, maybe with uh, two layers of type 5 8 uh, type X gypsum board, right? Wrap it around enough, uh, enough drywall and send it to UL or Intertech or, uh, you know, Met Labs or whoever does testing. Send that to them and say, hey, listen, light this thing on fire. I think it's ASTM uh, E119 test. They have a big, you know, fire shooting furnace. They put it in there. They turn it on for two hours. And then once it's off, and this is the critical part, they spray it with a host stream test to make sure that it stays intact. If your system stays intact after the fire and the host stream test, and it survives for two hours, then you would, you would have a two hour listed electrical circuit protective system. So it's not just a particular type of wire. If we go back a slide, circuit integrity cable is just a cable. Right? And, you know, that's a cable. That's a circuit integrity cable. An electrical circuit protective system consists of different components, which could include a cable, but then it's got concrete encasement or, uh, or drywall encapsulation, something like that that acts as the protection system. So these things are listed. They might even have uh, specific installation requirements to comply with the listing. Uh, mineral insulated cable, for example, uh, if you go to, boy, what is that, Article uh, 332, I think, for MI cable. Let's see, M, uh, metal clad is 330, so MI should be 332. Chapter 3 goes alphabetically from 320 to 340, so it's easy to, to remember which article you're in. So 332.30, uh, securing and supporting, has specific securing and supporting requirements for mineral, mineral insulated cable. It might have different requirements for mineral insulated cable that's used as part of an electrical circuit protective system. Because again, this is tested and it's and it's listed. So if I have a uh, MI cable and I secure it at the normal intervals and then I wrap it up in drywall and everything else, uh, maybe it didn't pass the test. And maybe all that was necessary to pass that test was securing it at tighter intervals. So that could happen. So it's imperative that we read the instructions and we follow the listing requirements anytime we're using an electrical circuit protective system. Again, fortunately, uh, most people will never have to deal with this at all. You know, some of you that do high rises or that do, uh, you know, a lot of emergency systems or critical operation systems, fire pumps, uh, this might be something that's old hat to you. So there you have it. Circuit integrity cable, 
and electrical circuit protective systems.